Hi, I'm Carl from the Woodshop TV. Today I'm going to make this lidded box and I'm going to inlay in some milliput. It's a two-part epoxy putty. It's pretty cool stuff. Let's get started. The Woodshop is sponsored by these fine companies and viewers like you. The lid and the base are made the same way. I hot glued them to a waste block. They're about an inch thick and about four inches in diameter. Just trued it up, gave it its basic shape, and then created a recess. The recess is to hold the centerpiece of the box. One will be for the base and then one will be for the lid. If you'd like more information on lidded boxes, I'll put a link at the end to another video I did. Before you part these off, sand to finish the inside of the lid and the base, and then we're going to use that recess to expand the jaws and shape the outside. I'm going to inlay a little bit in the lid too, so I used a parting tool to make a small channel. For the body, again, I used a piece of maple. It's about five inches by three and a half by three and a half. I just trued it up with a roughing gouge and then put a tenon on one end to grab at my chuck. I used a Forstner bit to clean out most of the material inside. On this, because I'm gonna make another channel in the center of it, I left the wall thickness pretty thick. Milliput's a two-part epoxy clay. Each color comes with two sticks. You just cut off equal parts of each, mold it around in your hands until you get a consistent color. I went with the terracotta and black for this one. But remember, go wash your hands before you move on to the next color and it'll contaminate it. And it comes off your hands pretty easy with, with soap and water. But I put down some contact paper because this stuff sticks to everything. Um, I was trying to get kind of a tiger striped effect, so I used a razor knife and was cutting some arcs and, and little shapes with it, but you really don't need to do that. I did another one where I did a swirled effect too. Um, you probably just roll it out like Play-Doh, like a snake, and stack them together and it would have gave me the same effect and taken a little bit less time. Once you have your, your shape or your design down, just go ahead and put it in the recess of whatever it is you're turning and let it set overnight. It says on the box it sets up rock hard in about uh, two to three hours, but I left it overnight just to be sure. This is the other box I'm working on. I just wanted to show you how clean it cuts when it's rough like this because I forgot to turn the camera on right away when I started turning it. So I have a lathe speed about 2500. I did the lid with a bowl gouge and the body of it with a carbide cutter and they both work great. It cuts like butter. messy just like acrylic or paint chips but cuts nice I'll clean up the edges real quick
All right, let's get back to our regular scheduled program. After it set overnight, I just made a few final passes with the round carbide cutter to clean up all the rough edges. And then I sanded it, my normal sanding process with the Howard's beeswax and orange oil. I went up to 240, then used the Hampshire grit and then polished it with a final coat of beeswax. Keep in mind, I was reading the instruction. It says it's heat resistant up to 130 degrees, so I wouldn't use a buffing wheel and try and buff it to get a polish on it. And with the lid, I used a bowl gouge to clean up the rough edges. Both methods cut nice and sanded it the same way. I got the other little box done too, and on that one, I put a bead around the lid there. I'll put some pictures of both these up at the end, and I had some leftovers I didn't know what to do with, but that one, I just swirled them around. I'll put some pictures of this up at the end too, and on that, I have no idea what I'm gonna do with that, <laughs> but it, it's just cool stuff. Um, like I said in the video too, it's it turns like butter. It looks like a mess before you get started, but it, it, it's, it's neat stuff and it polishes up nice. And I wanna give a shout out to Jim Overton. He's the one that started putting videos up using this stuff. So I'll put a link down below to his channel. Go check it out. There's some neat stuff he's doing with this. This comes in a variety of colors, and I'll put a link down below to where you can find that as well. One other thing, I'm not sure if you caught my interview with John on MakerCast. I put a link up on my Patreon page if you want to go check it out. But during the interview, he asked me what was the hardest part of doing all this and the website and, and emails and everything. And it's it, the writing. I have the hardest time with writing. Just basic returning emails. I have a hard time with it. Anyway, so I am working with Bill Lavoite from One Car Workshop, and Bill's been a professional writer most of his life, so he's helping me do descriptions for my website. I'm hoping to have him start doing instructables for all of the projects, so there'll be detailed instructions on how to, how to make whatever it is. Um, I did an instructable for the jellyfish and it took me six hours. It's just brutal. I can come out here and make it, but putting it into words is not my strong point to say the least. So it's going to free up a lot more time for me to be out here and I want to start doing a lot more live shows. All right, if this is your first time here, I have a new project video every Friday. I hope to see you there. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe. And I want to say thank you to everybody for watching the videos, sharing them, whether it's uh, Patreon or Etsy. I really appreciate your support. Till next time, take care.